It's been a whole year practically since the last time you were here. Welcome back. Thanks for having us. Thank you very nice much. Nice new setup. Thank comfy, you. Comfy thank couches. You. A little bit different than last time. It was uh, just a table, just table and chairs in here, nothing else really. Yeah. <laughs> just a picture, that picture, but that was it. The reason why I wanted to invite you guys back was because last time, something that was a little bit tough to tell, one of you was pregnant. I'm not going to say which one. <laughs> People can make their own assumptions. It wasn't too obvious the table was hiding it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Your shirts matched the table. I remember. I remember. <laughs> it all matched very, very well. So the reason why I wanted to bring you guys on today uh, was so that you could maybe give people a little bit of an idea of what your experience was like I'm not saying like hey like how do you do this what do you do why do you do what what's the the right thing to do because in every situation it's always going to be different but i'm curious about what you guys experienced going through this process of giving birth to a child here in portugal working with the portuguese system dealing with the portuguese system so i guess the first thing kind of just to maybe start not quite at the beginning but early on like what was the first steps finding out pregnant and figuring out okay we have to actually do something here what were the things the resources that you looked for when this all came to become a reality yeah for sure i mean this is our first time like our our daughter is our first child so it was our being pregnant in portugal and giving birth here was our first time being pregnant or giving birth at all right. um so that in itself was a was a new adventure right. um but yeah successful it, anywhere regardless yeah yeah yeah, for sure <laughs> um <laughs> just, just, just question country. marks on question marks on question marks and even more so being here right. um but yeah i guess from the time that we decided that we wanted to have a child um there wasn't much planning there it was just like okay we made the decision and we're like okay we're ready and then we find out that we're pregnant and then came like, oh, we need to get a doctor. I mean, I, I'd say like the first few weeks, you're just kind of like relishing in the fact that in like, you know, just like being excited and all that. And then the first thing to do is like make an appointment. But with who? When we first found out that we were pregnant, we actually went with a um, recommendation of one of our friends who was re who recently had a child. So be I guess being a, a foreigner in a new country, um, you don't, we don't have like, you know, your family doctor who goes right. way back or, you know, the doctors of your friends. So that was something that we had to navigate. So we kind of just went with, oh, we know this friend was, gave birth recently. Who was her doctor? And this was here in Portugal? Um, in Lisbon. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it was a Portuguese friend as well. Oh, so she's great. She's lived in Lisbon for quite a while. It was the closest thing to a recommendation from family that we had. Oh, that's I mean to be in another country that's a tough thing but <laughs> to be dealing with giving birth to the next generation and having to jump through all those hoops I mean you yeah. have to start looking through like who are those connections that you have who are the people in your neighborhood and totally to 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 be able to understand what they've been through but to have that resource I can imagine just would have been making the difference between a good experience and a bad experience yeah we were really fortunate that we had that friend <laughs> that who gave us a recommendation so we ultimately ended up um seeing that doctor oh, at the great. beginning very cool mm -hmm. so did you decide to kind of work through the public system or the private healthcare system doula no doula yeah or? so at that time we had already um, subscribed to private health insurance. So we went to the clinic, to that clinic, which was covered by the private health insurance. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit later on in our journey. So the first, you know, like, I guess when you're just earlier on in the pregnancy, the appointments aren't as frequent. Right. Um, it's still pretty chill. Um, we were lucky to have a pretty like smooth pregnancy. There's nothing too crazy. There's of course nausea here and there and right. like tiredness, but nothing to like nothing that um required many appointments and then as we got like maybe into like closer to the middle of the pregnancy right. as we started thinking more about the birth and navigating that right. then that's when we decided that we wanted to hire a doula um and hiring a doula made like was so instrumental to our experience because we were just feeling a little bit overwhelmed because mm -hmm. you know once you start thinking about hospital delivery the birth plan how it's all going to go down us not feeling very like comfortable with the language um especially in a medical setting yeah. um, we were like it would be good to have someone who can kind of like help us in preparation for and also during during the birth so you were able to find a doula who not only could help you but could also help you in english 
Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so she is fluent in English and in Portuguese. Wow. She was fantastic, um, helped us navigate the system. And on top of that, of course, like what a normal doula does is just kind of like prepare you for, for the birth and mm. like guide you through the experience of pregnancy. So it was like guiding me and also Richard as well. Yeah. So how was that from <laughs> your perspective as the father? Because I mean, of course, there's a lot of pressure on the mother and physically, mentally, emotionally, but being there as a husband and future father, what was your perspective at that early stage in the process? I think it was great. I didn't do any reading, so I didn't know what I didn't know. But the way that this particular doula organized it was, I forgot how many months back we started having regular appointments with her, I think it was once a month or so, where she would come in and basically like give us like a lesson, not just like a short consultation, mm -hmm. but like a, you know, and she had an agenda, like these are the th topics that we're going to cover. You know, we, we talked about the birth plan. So what are the different types of, how do you want to give birth? Natural intervention, C-section, all, all the different options. Mm -hmm. um, she also prepared us, especially for me as like the soon to be father, like basically told me like, all right, this is where you can actually be helpful. <laughs> and this is what you should prepare yourself for in order to like, this is the role that is really needed, especially as, as um, Kathleen's going through the, the whole pregnancy period. This is mm -hmm. what you can do to be a good partner. Mm. And I think that for someone to say that explicitly to me was super helpful because otherwise i think that it would have been um we're dudes we don't know what the hell is going we on. wouldn't know she probably doesn't know either but she knows she's uncomfortable right and she doesn't know how to articulate what i should do to help her except for just help me right and then it would just lead to all this mess right you know suffering right. and and i think that uh we were able to at least you know it wasn't like it didn't make it things necessarily easier, but it did give us a sense for like, what should we look out for as we're going through this process? Mm -hmm. So I would say equally for me, if not more, it was also super helpful to have a doula guide us through the process. And how was that for you guys going through and actually finding a doula? Because something that I've heard through friends who've also given, through, uh, given birth here in Portugal is that finding a doula in this country, few and far between, and you have to get lucky to even be able to book one. <laughs> How were you able to even go through? I mean, was that also your experience or? Yeah, well, I think I we got really lucky. Mm. Um, but in terms of finding the doula, I was like, yeah, where do I start? Uh, I remember like searching and like typing it into Google and then seeing some websites. But ultimately what um, what was really helpful was going through Facebook groups. So I mm. joined a bunch of like moms in Lisbon, um, parents, like I don't even remember the names, but I was just like any like, you know, mom or parent related Facebook right. group, let me see. And then like search the threads and just see people, who, uh, people who have been recommended and then just like did my research from there. And then I had reached out to a handful and then actually the first doula who I spoke to, we really got along and she's the one who we ended up working with. Very and cool. very fortunately, she had um, availability during our expected like due date. So it all worked really great. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And so was it something that you really, if you doing it all again, would you feel as though that that would be the right choice for you or that you would want to do it differently? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If we were to do it, I would do everything that we did, mainly hire, hiring a doula all over again. Yeah. She, I, I would say that like, she just made the experience so much more positive And so she just gave us like peace of mind mm -hmm. in that she was like one guiding us through the whole experience of like pregnancy and preparation for birth mm -hmm. and then just like navigating the Portuguese system. So she actually um, like had recommendations for doctors. She gave us a recommendation for our pediatrician wow. who's uh, who's our daughter's pediatrician today um, wow. who we're very, very happy with. And she just like, yeah, it's just like someone who can like from like no question was like too small or too stupid, um, especially when you're a first time parent, like you don't know how to do anything right. or you don't even know what questions to ask in the first place. I think that's a thing of what Richard was saying where she kind of like helps you um just gives you a heads up on things like right. here are the things you should think about or right. that you should be aware of and that was really really helpful and then so what about dealing with doctors and doctors visits how was that all throughout the pregnancy I mean especially because like again 
different country, different language, going to these different offices and making sure that things are all lined up in the right way. How, how was that? Yeah. And there's different customs too. There's a birth book. There's this book. <laughs> oh yeah. That a pregnancy book. A pregnancy. Okay. Pregnancy book. And this is your medical record for the whole pregnancy. Huh. And everyone in Portugal knows this. Every doctor in Portugal knows this. And you do not show up to your appointment without your book. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, is it that crazy? one time when we forgot the book, we were, we were told, do never to do this again. <laughs> really? After that appointment, the book was like a permanent, had a permanent spot in my bag, no matter where I went. So this book is like records of... It's like your, your physical med- medical records. Yeah. Wow. And, so whether and you oh, no go. matter what happens that, that's where they'll well they'll do the test the blood results whatever it is and they'll write everything in there so it's for their own record or if you go to another doctor they can see because it's the same convention for everybody and so they can see what's happening mm-hmm. um yeah so that's pretty cool like you know if you it's switch great. doctors, it, it switch actually systems. makes a lot of sense it's just <laughs> not something that we were expecting to be actually required right <laughs> you know they give it to you and they're like don't lose this and bring right. it to every appointment and you're like yeah 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 and then you don't bring it to an appointment. You, you, you hear it. <laughs> wow. I mean, I've never had children. And so like a lot of this stuff just to begin with is for him. But even that factor alone is something. Yeah. Like, oh, there's a there's a book. Okay, Physical cool. book. Yeah. And it carries over when you have a child as well. So now um, our daughter has her own booklet. And this booklet you bring to every pediatrician appointment. Wow. And they track we their weight missed. and their height <laughs> and all the you know notes from each doctor's visit. And I think we're supposed to keep it until she's 16. <laughs> just like we're going to start digitizing this very <laughs> soon. <laughs> I mean, that's to keep 16 years worth of records. I mean, okay, is it doable? Yes. But that's a lot of records right? to keep. Right? Yeah. Wow. And so have you guys had to look into yet, or have you gotten as far as looking at childcare, healthcare moving forward? I mean, this is getting away a little bit from the pregnancy, but is that something that's also that they kind of give you a little bit more information. I mean, you mentioned about this book, but are there other things that you have to take into consideration here in Portugal with, with, with child's health care? So in like the first few months, it's only vac- mostly vaccinations um, and they have a prescribed like national plan and you kind of just like follow, I think it was like two, four, six months, um, if yeah, I remember correctly. I think there's, so at least in our experience, the doula kind of did pregnancy, to birth, to immediate Mm post-birth, to here's what you guys can expect for the recovery, for any postpartum potential depression or whatever it is. Um, And then there's a handoff, essentially. So then we start our pediatrician appointments quite soon after, I forget, was it a week? A week after? Something like that. And so once we started working with the pediatrician, then the pediatrician's telling us more about, okay, this is the regularity of appointments that I recommend that you go to mm-hmm. these are the tests these are the vaccines what, what what and whatnot so from that perspective i feel like we had a guide throughout the whole process and, and now that with the pediatrician she's like kind of the new guide moving forward and they they kind of help us they tell us what we need to know about the portuguese system oh that's and how cool. to comply <laughs> that's cool so throughout all of this from pregnancy till child care not child care but health care how how does it go? Do you as parents have a lot of choice as to what the options are, whether it's natural or non-natural? Do they say like, you have to do this or you need to do that? How does that all look from, from the perspective of parents here? That's a great question. Yeah. And that's uh, what... That's what mainly um, brought us to hiring a doula. Mm. Because from our, like, just, you know, just like quick searching online and getting a sense of like what are the norms here in portugal um if we just you know went to a standard hospital and kind of just like went with whatever yeah just like kind of went with it um and we actually found that in private hospitals the like c-section rate is actually like above 50 percent um and just in terms of preferences we were hoping to have like an unmedicated birth um with like little to no intervention if possible um you know granted that it was like a healthy and like uh like there were no complications in the pregnancy and so i think hiring a doula was very instrumental to that because Mm -hmm. basically if you had all these you would just have someone who would guide you through like creating what's called a birth plan um so 
listing down all your preferences and making that known to the hospital that you're planning to deliver in so that they know ahead of time. And then actually, actually before that, um, picking a hospital and picking a doctor to, to follow you through your pregnancy who also is aligned in that way. Mm. Um, so there are choices, but I would say that you, or you have options, but you have to, you kind of have to navigate it and seek it out because it's not the norm. So having a doula in that case is not someone who's helping you along, but potentially advocating on your behalf as well to make sure that things are done the way that you would like them to be done. Exactly. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. Um, and she was actually there for the actual birth. And so, um, during, you know, when we checked into the hospital, she was there to communicate to the nurses. Cause you know, you can imagine as a laboring mother, you were just not in the right state of mind, um, to, to, to talk to anyone really. Wow. Um, so she was responsible for that. So she knew our, like my preference is ahead of time and she took care of, you know, setting that up, um, communicating to the nurses, making sure that, you know, everything was clear. And so, yeah, we had a very positive, positive experience. And then what about like, okay, so you've gone through delivery and everything, got a little beautiful baby. (laughs) She's adorable. I have to say she's like the cutest little thing, but so she's in your life now. What about release from the hospital? Because I know like in the States, for example, some States you have to like stay 24 hours and like you can't get out or anything like that. But what's it like here? Do you have to stay in the hospital for any specific amount of time or do they want you to uh, just as soon as you're uh, you're done, get out? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. Depending on the hospital, they have different policies regarding um, the typical stay for recovery as well as what the environment is that you recover in. So in some situations you'll recover in like a, like a shared room with one person, Mm -hmm. a shared room with more than one person, or I think in some private hospitals, you can get a private room where say your significant, uh, your your spouse, or significant other can, you can have a guest stay with you overnight as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, And the standard is for a vaginal delivery. It's two nights and for C-section, I believe it's three nights. Oh, wow. Right. And so where we delivered, uh, Kathleen stayed there for two nights, I believe, Mm -hmm. and they provide meals. Um, Nurses come in to check on you. There's like a button that you can press if you need to call for help, which I'm sure she used frequently. (laughs) First time off. As a side side story, very first night. It just made a noise. What do I do? (laughs) There was like a period of four hours where just pooping, eating, crying, nonstop. And I think on the fourth hour, I was like, I need help, <laughs> please. <laughs> and so during this time, you as the father aren't, weren't I'm able not to. I'm there. You know, yeah. you, I was unfortunately sleeping soundly back at home. <laughs> there were visiting hours, which I think Richard was very thankful for. So I, think, I, I, think I was visiting hours s- from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. So I had to get out by 8 p.m. I, I, no matter what, I had to get out by 8 p.m. I mean, I wasn't meaning to say that in any kind of judgmental way, but I mean, like, physically, you could have been there if need be. No. It was no. hospital policy. No, you're not allowed. Not allowed. Yeah. I had no choice but to be in my bed. <laughs> oh, darn. Oh, how horrible. For the record, the day after, I went to our favorite bakery and brought her some chocolate croissants okay. for, for, for you know, the, the morning after. <laughs> And some, like and some sushi. And some sushi. So he was forgiven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. That was like I had a peace offering. Don't no. worry. Wow. So yeah. legally not actually able to enter. It, it depends on on, yeah. on the hospital. I think it's policy. hospital oh, policy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. like I said, some some of the hospitals, if you can get like a private room, you can actually have a guest stay with you, and there's a private uh, bathroom, and so you can. Oh, so I, I take it then you had a shared room. Uh, uh, she yeah. had a shared room yeah. with, with one, one other companion. person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How is that to be sharing a room with someone else? And again, a different country, a different language, yeah. a different everything. It was actually really funny because the woman I was sharing with seemed to have have it all together. Like her baby was sleeping soundly in the bassinet. At some point she offered to carry my baby. 
This lady was fixing her bed in the morning. Like she had it good. Yeah. I was just trying to survive. And I was like, is this, this must not be your first child. Right. And she was like, oh no, it's my first. And I was like, you're amazing. Teach me your ways. Um, oh, it's master, please. I was like, I had, um, I had prepared. A lot of my preparation was spent on like mentally preparing for childbirth. I hadn't actually quite looked into like taking care of the baby. Like, <laughs> they said you could wing that part, right? <laughs> no, but I mean, like, like I have to say, like seeing you guys with your little girl, like clearly she's doing well. Clearly she's cared for. Like, I, I mean, really, it's so cute to see you guys together. She's like, all right. She knows what she wants. She's like, all right, time for mommy, time for daddy. Let's do this. I know I'm cute. Now give me some food. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how she, she knows is. what she wants. But That's I must true. say, those two first two nights in the hospital, it, you know, looking back in the moment, it was like really difficult. But in hindsight, it was like everything was better from there. It's like you got thrown into the deep end. <laughs> and so going home was like, you know, oh, I have like an extra pair of hands and I can like go to the bathroom. And it, it makes you, it, I guess, it kind of set set me up personally <laughs> for 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 it being a little bit more smooth sailing from there huh. and they did i recall i think they taught you things right i, yeah. I recall they had like bath time where they would come around and show new moms how to bathe okay. their child mm -hmm. did they teach you anything else they did how to like massage your baby's tummy if they have gas mm. um how to re breastfeed how to breastfeed mm. they they assisted with that overall the yeah just to like comment on the care the level of care was really excellent mm. um the nurses were all super friendly yeah they were pro like breastfeeding so they would assist really? you if you if you wanted it um and yeah overall just like yeah i'll say the language was hit or miss some people spoke english and then that's true kathleen has a little bit of portuguese that she could use but at the end of the day, and everyone's, I think at the end of the day, from my observation, everyone was super caring. Mm -hmm. So whether or not the language was there, like English proficiency was there or not, uh, I think you would still feel cared for. And, and what they would do mm -hmm. often when I, when I was there, if the person who w we were asking the question to didn't understand, then they would grab somebody who spoke English. So uh -huh. um, that's cool. I think overall, like our experience Sounds like from her perspective, for certainly from my perspective, it, it went super smoothly, the whole thing. Wow. And so, I mean, I'm assuming also you have friends in other parts of the world. I mean, we spoke a little bit about this before recording that you were kind of comparing notes with them. But mm -hmm. how was the, like your experience? Were there any things that you really felt other than the baby book or uh, having to deal with a, a different part of the world and a different system? Were there other things that really stood out that really differed from your experience to your friends' experiences in other parts of the world? Um, one of them. So a lot of our friends were in the U.S. in the United States. Um, and this is more for preparation for the baby coming. Um this isn't this isn't actually related to like pregnancy or the hospital experience or anything. Right. Um, but one thing that has stood out um, that actually took quite some time is you know as you're bringing this new human into the world, there's a lot of things that they need. You think about like this is part of I guess in preparation for the baby coming, you need to like buy a crib and buy a stroller, and these are things I've never done before. Yeah. Um, so as I was comparing notes with like my friends in the U.S. who are also having babies around the same time, they're like, "Oh yeah, I have like this friend and this friend." And when you do research and you know go online and read reviews, a lot of them are U.S. centric. Um, and so finding equivalents in Europe was actually non-trivial. I, I spent like quite, quite some time just like doing research and figuring out like what they like, what, what to buy, how to buy mm -hmm. them um, in preparation for, for the baby coming. And what about like those, the cost of those things? Do you think there was a big difference in price between what your friends were spending in the U.S. versus what you spent here in Portugal? Um, cost wise, I think in the U S there were just a lot more choices. Uh -huh. So you like quite, you have like a big range right. versus here. The choices were a little bit more limited. I get you. Um, I get you. but I wouldn't say that it was like significant. It wasn't significantly like more or less. Mm -hmm. And what about like overall? Cause like 
you have to make sure first you're signed up on these different systems. How was that to make sure that you were on the system in the correct way? Was that difficult to go through? Did you have to spend any extra for care, for insurance? What was that all like? Yeah, so in terms of insurance, we had signed up for private health insurance prior to getting pregnant. So we already had that set up. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we didn't. Luckily, we didn't have to kind of like, you know, rush and get paperwork sorted in preparation for the birth. So that was all pretty much like figured out. Um, also, I think I don't think there's actually that much to get set up. Hmm. Worst case scenario, you just go to a hospital emergency room and they'll take you. Really? And give birth. Huh. Right. That is true. That is true. That's how. That's my understanding. Oh. Not, I mean, it I, makes sense. I've not tried like... this, but <laughs> that's my understanding. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the main thing for the the health insurance was because we were going with private doctors for the preparation the, the during pregnancy. Um, we used the private health insurance to partially cover those appointment visits, mm. but for the birth itself we'd have to work with our insurance provider to figure out the details there because I think there's a, you need to hold insurance for a certain amount of time before it'll actually cover a birth. Mm -hmm. um, in which case, if, it, if, it, if it's too short, then you pay out of pocket. And but, but the out of pocket cost, even in Portugal, like 7,000 euros or something like that. Wow. Around that, that point versus our friends in the US, fortunately, everyone that we've spoken to has health insurance, but the price without health insurance is like 30,000. 30, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some other things that stood out in terms of just like specific to the Portuguese system was um, after the birth. So once you have your baby, you have to register the baby's birth. Right. Um, and some hospitals will have like a desk where you can register them in the hospital and get all that sorted. It just so happened there was one in the hospital where we delivered, but it so happened that it was closed on the days we were there. <laughs> so then you actually have to bring your child to um, a, a government office to right. register them. Like and to the police or? Um, it's it's I, a place it's like a registry. for oh. registering birth. Oh, mm -hmm. But you have to bring the child, you, yeah, like physically. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And you show them, and then you have to bring. If you don't speak Portuguese, you have to bring a Portuguese translator wow. with you. Um, so that's really important to know. Wow. Um, but you out can of just your own pocket. I'm um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you have to pay out of your own pocket. Well, organize you bring, yourself. You, you they organize don't have yourself. any. They don't, don't have help. like a service. Yeah, there's uh -huh. no one available there. Um, but yeah, you show up. You didn't. We didn't have to book an appointment. We just showed up like you know when the office opened so that we could avoid any lines. Mm -hmm. um, the process was pretty straightforward. It was like under an hour. Um, but yeah, we did have to make sure that we knew that ahead of time. And we right. brought a Portuguese speaking person. And then our baby was there, <laughs> our little fresh baby. <laughs> and then we got her registered, um, got her birth certificate on the spot. Oh, wow. And then from there, then you can take care of like getting their other documents. And so, because this is something that I've heard in the past few years has changed that there's actually citizenship through birth here in Portugal. So your little girl is a Portuguese citizen? Yeah. She so is, as yeah. long as the parents, I believe this is the new rule, as long as the parents are, have been residents for at least one year, then the child is automatically a citizen. Uh-huh. So a little Portuguese baby. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She beat you to the punch. I know. She beat us to it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and she just landed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> and so how does that also work? Because like you guys are both American citizens and then that also I can imagine is. Uh, so you have to report their birth to the other countries as well. Right. So we got her American birth certificate. Well, like re report of birth abroad. I believe that's what they call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we had to submit that to the U.S. Embassy. And, and then we had an appointment to schedule um, her photo taken, basically, so mm -hmm. that she could get her U.S. passport. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. And so is there, like, did you have to get documents translated, or they just accepted the documents as is? Or, I mean, are the documents, her documents, are they only in Portuguese, or are they multilingual documents? Mm -hmm. I think they're just Portuguese. The birth certificate is issued in Portuguese. Yeah. When we applied for her U.S. We submitted that alone, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I That's suppose cool. it depends on the Maybe it's because it's country. a U.S. embassy in Portugal. I, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. Maybe. But they sure. accepted I mean, the that would, original. That would make sense. Yeah. Like sometimes, usually, for countries, I mean, I, I don't know necessarily the, their rules, but usually in a country, they have to be able to like offer services in the language of the country, right. plus the country that right. it's represented right, right, as well. Right. 
But that's really interesting right. to, to have all of these extra factors to do. Because this is something that I thought of. It's like, because I ended up getting dual citizenship through Italy as an adult. And I'm working through others and whatever. That's a different story for a different day. But mm-hmm. I keep thinking to myself, if I have children one day, like, what, what are all these hoops that I have to jump through? And like, yeah. Because, like, also, like, I don't live in a city that's near a, a uh, an embassy. Like, right. you guys are based in Lisbon. Right. So, oh, like, yeah. you've got the U.S. embassy. You'll like, have to take the train. You're like a 10-minute Uber. <laughs> Here, it's hours. It's, it's, it's an overnight trip. Like, I had to go at one point to, to get something done at the, at the U.S. embassy. And... I stayed over just because going and coming in the same day wasn't necessarily realistic. I mean, it could be done. Like it, doing it with the plane. I mean, now this is going off on a completely different tangent, but doing it with the train, I wouldn't do it in the same day. Doing it with the plane, theoretically Possibly. doable, but I would, it, it'd be a very long day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the other interesting difference, and we didn't we didn't really explore this one too deeply, but um, in Portugal, there's a convention in the way that a person is named Mm -hmm. and i think it was something like what were the fields uh typically you have like a name a middle name and then the mother's made a name and then the father's last last name yeah right Um, so if you don't want to follow that like say you don't have a second name mm -hmm. essentially um i think for it seems like for portuguese people that's not allowed but since we were foreigners, right. they said, you can do that. Right. This is actually, I'm so <laughs> glad you said that because that's actually one of the biggest things that people don't realize is that in Portugal, there are official names that you have to hold. Well, okay. With the caveat that unless you're from abroad, then you can use right. a different name. But mm-hmm. there's official names here in Portugal that you have to use. And the only way that someone born and raised here can use a non kind of approved Use, name <laughs> yeah well the thing is that all the names have to be approved but the there's a way for new names to get added to the list and that is for parents who have children at least this is i could be wrong but this is what i've been told for parents huh. who are from abroad who have a child with an, uh, a name that's not already on the list the first child will be the one that enters the name on the list so there's actually like online i mean i'm sure you guys took a look at the the, the official list of portuguese names it's interesting to go through because like there's some names that are like really out there yeah 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 <laughs> so was that something at first like when you were looking through names did you have that understanding that you could name her whatever you wanted or was it we did know so you we did. knew that there was a list and we knew that foreigners were exempt so when we were naming her, we actually didn't look at the list and uh, we just came up with her name. But funny enough, the name that we ended up on is on the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good because like also one of the other things, I think there's a caveat, another caveat on the caveat um, on that list that if the name would be a name that would bring some type of un like put bad attention to the child that they would be teased or something like that then i think they can overrule the naming of the child or sure. something like that i forget mm-hmm. what the rule yeah. is but it's really interesting it's just it's a different system and a different way of approaching yeah. life yep so yep. you know what guys i want to say thank you so much for coming you've i appreciate you're taking the time to be here but before i let you go i want you guys to just quickly talk about what you do because i think it's something that's really important for people to take a look at of course this episode is not sponsored because i wanted to bring you guys on as friends because we've Aww. developed a friendship yeah, already thank and... you for having us back and <laughs> it's course. good to see you <laughs> no it's so great to have you back in braga but like I was telling you earlier today, we had some lunch before lunch or after lunch or whatever. It doesn't matter. But I was saying, I really regretted that I didn't use border when I went through my whole <laughs> thing. And I'm saying that very genuinely that like I did it all on my own because I, I could do it. Of course. Why not? Because you can do it doesn't mean that you should do it. So, <laughs> and then getting to There's know your services there. and hearing even people who are subscribed to my channel and people even who I've become friends with who are living here in Braga now talking about their wonderful experiences of how easy it was to use your services. So I'm not going to before inflating any egos too much here. I'll let you guys talk about what it is that you do. Sure. Take it away. <laughs> I spoke too much about oh, I spoke me. so much about the birth. Me, me, me. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, yeah. So we started a company called Border and we basically make it streamline the process of moving to Portugal. So we help foreigners who are trying to move to Portugal with a lot of the paperwork. 
we started out opening or helping people get their NIF number, which is the tax, Portuguese tax ID number remotely, open bank accounts remotely, and we're piloting a bunch of new services. So we're getting into visas, um, taxes. Those are probably the, the two ones that we're working on right now. Like NHR, for example. NHR. Um, we have tax consultations with Portuguese tax lawyers and also tax filing services for Portugal. Next year, we'll probably be playing around with um, piloting like a U.S. tax filing service as well. So then oh, we wow. can do, sorry, we can do both sides. Very cool. Um, but yeah, we, we work with local Portuguese professionals. These are lawyers, um, accountants to actually get the work done, but we handle, we handle like the customer service. We, we do the, the initial part of like making sure that people have their documents correct and, and whatnot. That is awesome. I'm uh, really excited to hear more about this uh, this dual uh, filing service that you guys. Are. So we're not just going to have a second time with you guys on here, but we'll have to have a third time. <laughs> for sure. Third for sure. Yeah. That's yeah. a very unique service, I will say, because not many companies offer for the nation that you're in, plus your home nation. That's yeah. that's something that I often get people asking me about, like, and even for myself, like having to deal with multiple people f that don't work together, that don't know each other's systems. So to yeah. have a one-stop shop, that is really amazing. So I wish you guys much luck on that. Thank you so much again for coming. Cool. It's so great to have you here. Yeah, Thanks for having thank us. You. This is fun. <laughs> of course. Thank you.